Hi everyone and welcome. Today we are learning how to do shadows to help ground our subjects on our colouring sheets. We are going to be colouring the Cabbage Patch Kids from the colouring collection issue 42. There is going to be a couple of ways that I want to show you on this particular picture. Really just to give yourself more options when you're doing your colouring. So on the little doggy here, I'm going to be showing you how you can do it in graphite. And I'm going to be using Faber-Castell 9000s, but any graphite pencils will do. What I mean by graphite is just your standard writing pencils. Uh, for the colouring section, I will be using a selection of polychromos, which are also Faber-Castell, and I'll go through the colours that I'm using at the time that I use them. So to begin with, I'm going to show you how we can cast a shadow simply by using some graphite. What is important to remember is where our light direction is coming from, and I'm going to show you a couple of examples here of the differences that we can see. So depending on uh, where your light source is and whether you're indoors or outdoors will determine all sorts of things with regards to the strength of your shadow, the direction of your shadow and how long your shadow is. So the higher in the sky the sun, the shorter your shadow. The lower in the sky, the longer your shadow. So in this example here we have a really, really soft shadow happening and it's really nice and gentle. And then we have the opposite example just here of where actually the shadow is extremely strong and very dark blue, but it really emphasizes the shape and the strength of the sun. So bear these things in mind when you're thinking about coloring your images. And we are going to go on the premise that she is indoors and the, we're going to have some indoor lighting which is generally a little bit softer so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to predetermine where my light source is going to be so I think my light source will be up here so it will be going in this direction so any shadows that will be cast will be going over into this direction so I'm just going to grab my HB which is just a standard drawing pencil and we're going to do this under the dog the important things to remember that the closer to the ground the subject is, the darker the shadows and normally um, the sharper the shadows. But again, if it's softer light, then they can be quite um, faded out. So underneath his feet, which is where he would be walking along on the ground, we know that we can get away with shadows that are quite dark. So all I'm going to do is draw underneath and because the paw is directly on the ground we're not going to have a lot of soft shadow happening we're just going to have quite hard shadow and a little bit at the back there because of his his legs because our light source is coming in this direction the shadow is going to be cast so we're just going to pull it out from the front a little bit more because his neck and his body will also be casting a shadow So what we can do here is his paw is slightly up from the ground and of course it will be further away than this. So we're going to judge roughly where that paw is going to be above the ground and we can just pop in a lighter shadow. Don't go too heavy because we can blend this out to make it nice and soft. And we want to keep them quite long. And then on his back paw here, we go from his toe, which is just about here, and we'll come all the way forward again because the whole of his leg will be casting a shadow on that floor. But it will be darker at the closest section nearest to the ground. What you can do if you want to soften it up a little bit is you can get a cotton bud and you can just blend it out just to soften it up a bit. And then what we want to do is just create a little bit of a shadow underneath because his whole body will be blocking any light going onto the ground. So we're just going to very lightly Just 
get a shadow underneath. And a little bit of a blend out. And you notice I've gone out much further than where the dog's nose is and that's because this blanket will also cast a shadow so bear that in mind anything that will block your light source from hitting the ground will cast a shadow so from the toe we'll be going across this way and again from the blanket we would have just a bit of a light shadow because it's quite a distance off the ground so we can just continue adding a little bit now if we were to do this in colored pencil which is what I want to show you on this side uh, we would determine really if you were to color the ground I don't know if it'd be wood flooring or carpet the color would then determine what your shadow would be but generally shadows will pick up the colors of the surrounding areas but in this instance as we don't have any we're going to be using a selections of grays so we're going to be using cold gray two cold gray three and cold gray four they are the ones that we will be using today so again cold gray two three and four so what we're going to do is we're going to start with our lightest to just block out where our shadow is going to be so Again, the light source is coming in this direction, so no light will be able to get past her body. So we're gonna go from the toe out towards the edge of the paper. In the lightest gray, because we want to build up slowly without going in too dark too quickly. It's easier to add than it is to try and take away. We want to come down a little bit because we've got like the bulk of her hair and the arms. And then we can work up to our next colour, which is our cold grey three. And we could strengthen the shadow like underneath where the foot and the knee will be. And underneath the toe area here if the light is coming from here there won't be any shadow behind her because the light will be able to get behind this heel and then it will be stopped by where the toes are so the shadow is to start where the toes are Again, we just want to gently blend those out. We can then come in with the darker grey. Just again, think about the closest sections of the body that will cast the deeper shadows. Where the foot is there, I'm just going to do a little bit of a darker one, just where I imagine her toes may be. So again, if it's coming down here. If you want to really uh, accentuate the fact that it's a, a strong light, I have a colour here called Dark Indigo, a uh, Paint Grey, apologies, Paint Grey, um, and it's really, really good uh, for getting in there and creating a nice bit of depth, but without it having to be a uh, black colour. So we can get right in there underneath the toes where it would be the absolute darkest. And then I'm just going to blend over a little bit more with the cold grey too. Now if you imagine, depending on the surface that you use, if you do a carpet, for example, or a rug, your shadows will be much softer than if they would if they were on tile or a hardwood flooring. So they're the other things to bear in mind. But she's quite nicely grounded on the floor now. You can see that the closest contacts are the darkest shadows. And then the further away you are, the lighter the shadows. We're going to move on to something that has a little bit of colour already on there. We have this super cute 
beach scene and I've already put a bit of sand color in there and just added a bit of texture just to to give it a bit more of a, a sandy feel um, the color I used for that to create the color of the sand is brown ochre again polychromos so brown ochre is the color that I used to do the sand there is a really really good color in the polychromos range called Caput Morton Violet and it's actually really really good for casting or cre creating the color of shadow especially in warm tone settings like this one now if you remember back when we were discussing the length of shadows I have a couple of examples again so we're going to go back to this lady here where clearly the sun is much higher up in the sky and it's casting a much shorter shadow but if we are to change the time of day and the sun is further down you can see how elongated that shadow and how much lighter that shadow is so again what you want to do first is determine the direction of your light and what time of day it is so i think for us we're actually going to go a little bit later in the day you know she's uh, she's had a hard day's work and she's uh, just chilling out now keeping her eye on the last few stragglers that are on the beach um, and I am going to grab to begin with my Caput Morton Violet and we are also going to use a colour called Nougat so these will be as your beach is your lightest the Nougat will be our mid and the Caput Morton Violet will be our darkest so again we're going to determine where our light is falling so let's just go in a different direction this time let's say the sun is behind her and it's quite low set so what we are then doing is bringing all those shadows to the front so we're going to have a slight angle but i'm going to use my nougat just to block in the direction of all the objects so we don't get ourselves confused as we change so I'm just going to have a slight angle here so effectively the sun is sort of coming in this direction um, and again from here just gently blocking in where we're going to be going this also helps you determine whether or not you think it looks okay and if you don't like it it gives you the option to change it without you going in too heavy too quickly now if the sun is coming behind her you're not going to have a solid shadow underneath the chair because the light is going to be shining through the chair so think of it as elongated here so you can see actually there's quite a lot of light still underneath the chair you can see that there's still quite a lot of light there and it's not until you get up to here that it's actually quite solid so don't feel that you need to put shadow absolutely everywhere that there is a subject. So this back leg here, we would bring down to the front. And this back leg here and try and keep everything in the same angle. You're also going to have this crossover so if we just gently put in where our crossover will be again just to help us visualize that we've got everything in the right place before we go in to dark again we've got this one here you would have light coming through and it would more than likely be this little bottom bit here that would be casting the shadow and then of course the rest of her would be up here so you wouldn't necessarily see that so what we can now do is really start to bring in some nice strong shadows so the first thing I'm going to do is swap over to my Caput Morton Violet and we're going to bring out some nice strong shadows Just going to blend it a bit lighter as we hit this end if you find that your shadows have too much color feel free to grab yourself a gray 
Um, in this instance, I have a warm grey at five. And this is what we call toning. So we'll tone down the redness. Which also helps give it a little bit of a more or more natural feel. You don't have to do this because if you remember quite how red that shadow is. So again, it really depends. So in this instance, the red is being picked up by all the oranges around. And with this lady here, we are quite dark blue. So I would use dark indigo in this instance because a lot of her surroundings are blue. If we imagine maybe that's an odd pedal or a, pe a pebble or a shell, we can actually then go in and, and increase the shadow in on that bit as well. I'm going to swap to my nougat. And then I'm going to swap to my cold grey or warm grey, apologies, five. Now, depending on how strong you want to go with your shadows, you can bring in um, either, again, like a, a Payne's grey or a dark indigo. In this instance, just to show you, I'm going to bring in a Payne's grey. I don't want to alter the colour too much because I like the idea of the shadow having a nice bit of colour but it's just to show you the difference it can make. So there is our first shadow cast. So we'll then go in and start popping the leg shadows in. I have the Caput Morton Violet in my hand at the moment. I'm going to blend over a little bit with the Nougat. And then I'm going to use my Paints Grey and we're going to come under here where it would be the absolute darkest. And then you'd also have here, not much, but just a little bit of a change probably in the shadow depth. So I'm just going to put it there and that helps indicate where that crossbar is. And then I'm going to use my warm grey just to blend over what we have done. And then we're going to move on to the next one. Caput Morton Violet again is in my hand. And we're going to do, do a couple of the crossovers here. Our paint's grey, absolute darkest back in this section. And again, we're just going to have a little bit of a shadow change to indicate the cross beam. I'm going to swap to my warm grey. The colours will also be listed in the description, so you can have a look there to get all the information that you need. To the next leg, still got Kappa Mortem in my hand. Payne's Grey. Nougat. Warm grey. 
And then we're going to move on to the last one here again with the Caput Mortem. Because of the angle of this, it's not going to be a massive long shadow. Um, so the it's sort of tilting backwards. So we don't need quite a long shadow as we have on these. We could probably blend that out a bit. So let me grab my original colour, which was the uh, brown ochre. We can just blend that out a little bit more. But you are going to have some shadowing underneath this strap here. And under here as well. Haynes Grey. I'm going to blend it with my brown ochre just to soften it out a little bit under here. Cap of Morton Violet. And there you have a very nice young lady enjoying the beach with some very, very lovely sunshine happening. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss out on any future releases.